Well, hello! I'd like to welcome you to another exciting episode of Pens in Use. This is the show where I talk about the fountain pens and inks that I've been using throughout the week. And this is my first week back to school, but I'm smarter this year than I was last year. Last year, if you'll remember, I made the mistake of uh, trying to record it at the end of the week after I'd been through a whole week of teaching and not going to do that this week because I have no voice left and I don't remember what I put up but it was something random and so I'm filming this the day before I go back to school so we'll get my voice in shape and uh, be able to get back to regular episodes If videos like this interest you where I talk about fountain pens both new and old and at all price points I would invite you to subscribe and hey, uh, how is school starting where you are? Perhaps you live in an area where they do all year school. Uh, that's certainly an innovation, especially in these days where schools have air conditioning and such, which I think is worth considering. Um, I personally would enjoy less of a summer break and more breaks throughout the year. So let us know what you think down in the comments. Now, let's take a look at the pens. So first pen I have here, uh, th this is what's basically going to go with me, although I'm having some thoughts on that too. Uh, first pen here is a Pelican M800, modern. Beside it, I have a Pelican 400NN, which is smaller, just like the modern M400 would be smaller. Except the modern would, wouldn't be shaped like this, it would be shaped more like the M800 with the squared off ends. Never owned one, I'm just saying. Uh, this is my Selector, where we all collaboratively agreed on an ink to try in it. Uh, when this ink runs out, I am going to give the pen a break, though. I have other pens I need to enjoy as well. Um, I have my beautiful Matador 992. And, you know, I say beautiful, and I'm not being sarcastic. You know, I love the simplicity of these plain black pens. I have my Caveco 803, oh, I should say Caveco Dia 803-07 from the 30s. Uh, a little bit difficult to clean out, so probably when it goes empty I'm going to refill it with the same ink. And maybe after that I'll clean it out. Almost empty, but still going. My Aurora 88 Vintage, one of my favorite models. Uh, my Aero Unsa Besta pen I actually really am enjoying. Doesn't look like much. But like I said, I like those slim black pens. And how often do you hear people raving about their Aero pen? E-R-O, so I could be mispronouncing it. Speaking of lesser known brands, Pond Senior. This is a Norwegian pen. I'm in the process. I haven't heard back from them yet. Um, I got sent to somebody else. I'm in the process of getting permission to use a vintage Norwegian ad for Pawn when I film the review of this one. You know, if I don't get permission, I'll just put a link in the video description. Um, I do respect copyrights as much as possible. A Majestic, which is an American-made, I don't know, second or third tier brand, but gorgeous. And it's not a bad writer. A.G. Spalding and Brothers. When I originally reviewed this pen, and the, the video link is down below, I thought baseball company. I thought of the Spalding baseball stuff. No. <laughs> A.G. Spalding and Brothers is a designer of clothing and, and uh, leather goods. Totally different world. Uh, Caveco V14S, which has been my daily writer for a while and will continue to be till it runs out of ink. And waiting to take over for the winter, my Lamy 2000. Uh, after all the trials and tribulations I went through with the Lamy 2000 this year, last year, I'm hoping we'll have a more sedate year. Uh, so those are the pens and inks that I'm using this week. Uh, I'll just mention somebody uh, in my video I filmed my uh, first impression. Oops, the fly over there. Uh, first impression I filmed this week. Uh, Senator 210, they were asking what all the noise was. Well, the answer is, uh, I some of those, I have about 9 or 10 first impressions sitting on my hard drive, well, in the cloud right now. Uh, 
that was an old one. That was one of the first ones I filmed when I was upstairs, back when I was thinking it was just temporary. So I didn't really figure out real well how I was going to film up here. I was just like, well, make it work till we get back downstairs where I belong. But as you can see, I'm still upstairs because I found I like this better, even though I've got stuff in the living room that I'd prefer not to. Uh, as always, I'll be doing this writing sample in the BOMO Art Journal. And by the way, the thumping and such is because the microphone used to sit on this table where all the writing is. Found out that didn't work because of the thumping, and it is now moved. I just bring over a small, like a TV tray type table, and that's what the microphone's sitting on now. So let's take a look at how these write. Uh, my first pen that I'm going to start with is my Pelican M800. Uh, this this is a pen I bought. Um, it had been one I kind of wanted. There had been a few special editions that really caught my eye, and then I was just ah no. And uh, but then I saw this one, not a special edition or anything, but at just such a good price that I thought, oh, and I bought it. So uh, what do I think? You know, I did a I can't remember if it was a review or a first impression anymore. But I did a video on it anyway. It's linked down in the in the video description. And, uh, yeah, I like it. Uh, is it my most exciting pen? No, but it is a good quality writing experience. I, I can see why people like them so well. It's not one that's going to get my passionate loyalty like some of the others I've used. But it's certainly one I would recommend. Especially if you can get one at the price I did. Uh, the ink in this is uh, one I have not used in a long time. It's a scented ink, which, you know, uh, I'm not too thrilled with most scented inks just because they don't smell anything like what they're supposed to smell like. Uh, but I do like the color on this one. Uh, I'll give an exception to fur. I think Deatrementis fur smells really good. But I don't have a sample of that for you to test the smell right now. No, it doesn't have the depth of shading and character like some other inks. But that's okay. They don't all have to have that. The th main thing is it's a good ink. My next pen is much older. It's a Pelican 400NN. In fact, this was the pen that convinced me to buy the more modern one. And just in case you're curious, I don't know if this is fading or just changes in dyes and manufacturing technique. But you can see it's kind of the difference in the barrels. The modern one seems a little more even, a little less faded. It could be all in my head, who knows. This has a, a more flexible nib. I am told that the Pelican M1000 has a more flexible nib also. Uh, I'm also told that the correct word there is bounce, not flexibility. But this pen dates from the 1950s. I don't know the nib size. I don't see one written on that. But just looking at this, I'm leaning towards a fine. Uh, the ink in it is Giban. Blue my Soti, which is a nice understated blue flower, uh, has some kind of romantic meaning. The bottle, the bottle was a goofy bottle. It came in a heart-shaped bottle, which is a bugger to fill from. So, and that's kind of one of my complaints about Girbon inks is I don't really like their bottles. They have a nice variety of colors, Some, a lot of them more understated than you get from other brands, but and just a nice variety of colors. This next pen, as I said in my introduction, I'm going to force myself to let have a break after it empties out. This is my wonderful Selector. It was a first impression I filmed a while back and thought, why did I wait so long to film that video? Just a beautiful finish, and what you can get out of that nib is just amazing. I don't know the model number really, 
Sometimes I write modeled purple and black, but then I realize that I have another one with a very different finish that's, I think it's an arrow, but anyway, uh, this is a Dutch pen. Uh, the ink in it is related to this Diatramentus Blackberry, but it's, oh, I should have done these together. Uh, but it's not the same ink. This is Noodler's. Black Swan, in Australian Rose. Which is supposed to have very dark shading and then that interesting purple color. Uh, a companion ink that's also very interesting is Noodler's Black Swan in English Rose. And actually, Blue, Noodler's Blue Nose Bear is another companion in the same series, but that has some very different properties that may make it not a favorite ink for a lot of people. Uh, next, I bring you my Matador 992, which really does deserve to have a review filmed. Have not filmed one yet, but I can't film a first impression, which now I'm doing with every pen that comes through my door. So if I'm not ready to film a first impression, it doesn't get inked up, which definitely helps me behave. This one, you can't really see it, probably. Maybe just a hint. There's a spiral ink window, which is uh, rather attractive. Uh, the nib, by the way, looks... I'll do it like this. Looks a bit small for the pen, but that was kind of a vintage thing. You'll see that on more than one vintage pen. And this, of course, has an extra fine nib. And the ink in it is the very plain Jane, but obviously looks good in this pen. Looks a lot like the Blue Myosote. A very plain Jane, Parker. Oops, K-E-R, Quink, Washable Blue. Uh, there was a time when uh, Parker ink was what I used. I was basically a Parker black user. Uh, I didn't care for this ink. I uh, Then I discovered Noodlers and then from there I discovered all these wonderful colors and sort of went nuts but uh, lately I've kind of come back to Parker I've been using it more and more not so much they're black I've got more uh, Pelican brilliant black than I know what to do with so I'm focusing on using that up but it is fun to come back I really enjoy Parker's blue black especially this ink is my Caveco Dia, 803-07. This pen dates from the 1930s. One of these episodes, I compared it to the modern Caveco Dia. Uh, it, this one is much smaller, but you can see some similar design ideas. And this pen just about has to be posted. I'm not usually a poster, but with this pen I am. Uh, this ink comes out really dark in this pen. And the, ink, the nib is an oblique medium. The ink is a califolio. We're going. Make sure I just spelled that right. Well, you always have to be careful with French words, uh, with how you pronounce them and how you spell them, because uh, you'll have offended French viewers. Personally, when somebody who's language who, whose first language isn't English uh, tries to speak English I'm I believe in being encouraging but not everybody including people 
who are English speakers have that attitude. Some people just have a very nativist view of their own language. English only, man. But you're a tourist in Italy. Well, speak English. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that attitude is sadly not unique to just one country. All right, here we have the Aurora 88 vintage. Speaking, if you're wondering why I randomly brought up Italy, that's because I was looking at this pen as my next one. I don't know the nib size. Uh, oops, that's an 88, not an 85. That on the finial is a clue that it's probably a fine point. Has some flex, but I guess they had a flex fine also that would have had a white ring around there. But uh, I don't care. I, I enjoy the pen and that's all that matters. The ink in it is Califolio. Speaking of blue blacks, Equinol. Might have mispronounced that also. Equi. Me almost misspelled it as well there. Whoops. I don't know what the five refers to. Because it's not like they have this ink in a one, two, three, and four also. It's just this one. You know, sometimes like Quizzy has a, like a blue three and a blue four, for example, but... I don't know. Maybe it's one that hasn't been released or hasn't been released in the United States. I get to my Arrow Unza Besta. How do I know? I don't know much about this brand. Um, that's one of the reasons I haven't filmed its review yet. I need to just take the time to figure it out. Probably not this week with school starting, but... Because I guarantee the review you're getting this week is going to be one I filmed over the summer. But I'd like to soon. Uh, I don't see a nib size written on it. I just see a plus on the nib. Er, there we go. Take that for what it's worth. So that's something I need to learn. Uh, the ink in this is a... Uh, I've got a couple bottles of Hiroshizuku. I didn't used to like this, but I've gotten so I like the fact that they sell these really small bottles of ink. Um, I mean, I'll use them up more quickly, but I think the point is I will use them up. Oops, I forgot to do my rating sample. I will use it up, and in the meantime, it's not going to take up a whole lot of space on my shelf. As opposed to some of my really large bottles. Because really, except for black ink, well... Black Ink and Sailor Gentle Epinard. I don't go through bottles too quickly. But none of us do. Let's be honest. If you have a bunch of inks like I do, it takes you a long time to go through them. You put like one or two mils in a pen. You have a 70... Yeah, let's say you have a 40 mil bottle. That's 20 to 40 fills on that bottle. And how long does each fill last? So... Now you start doing the math on it and you realize, yeah, that's a little unlikely. This one, of course, you saw looks a lot like one of those uh, Parker Vacumatics. This one's a button filler. The ink in it is another Juban. Wow, I totally failed on that one. Lee de Tay. Just a nice, well-shaded brown. And that's one of the benefits you get when you use a little bit less saturated ink like this, is often they can shade better. I mean, this is going to look good when it's dry. Now the Noodler's Black Swan is another one that uh, shades well, and that's definitely saturated, but... 
Anyway, uh, my Majestic, another pen I want to review. Uh, this is U.S. I can't find much about them, and I'm just going to live with that. I don't even have a model number for it or anything. This is Pelican 4001 Dark Green. Dunkelgrün. I don't really like Pelican 4001 Brilliant Green, but I really do like this one. And that's why I have a bottle of this, but not of their Brilliant Green. Almost skipped a pen here. I'm just grabbing, not even looking. Uh, this is, oops, this is my AG Spalding Brothers designer clothes company so I suppose this is a bit of a designer pen it's certainly unique looking for whatever else you may think of it grips a little weird I filmed a uh, revisit to this pen because it's been five years so look for that in the upcoming weeks can't tell you exactly when I'll publish it And I never write my ampersands very well, so uh, we'll try here, but they always end up just looking like an S. Yeah, it looks like an S. <laughs> uh, A.G. Spalding and Brothers, and they don't do a model number or anything. And then this is a medium nib. I didn't actually get any choice. And this ink is Califolio Bordeaux. I had it in a different pen a while back, and everybody was remarking on how pink it looked. It's a more intense color here, but it's still very pink. I guess uh, it's not my mental picture of Bordeaux. For whatever that's worth. And then we get to Kaveco V14S, which should be just about empty. Uh, I'm going to just carry it with me and use it as my pot. I'm just holding it up to the window to see if I can see ink in it. But the ink window in this one is kind of a bare, so it's not always easy to tell. But I'll just continue to carry it and use it till it runs empty. It deserves to get used up. This is a good pen. Uh, stingy as all get out with the ink though. Uh, as you will see here in a minute when I compare it to another wetter pen with the same ink. And of course, that same pen is my beloved Lamy 2000. Sadly, this is not the Lamy 2000 that I had originally bought. This is a replacement pen. Because the one I originally bought last fall in about October, I think. I might have the date wrong. But anyway, I was writing with it at school. Set it down. Just didn't push the cap on. Just kind of set it on like that. And uh, turned to get something. Turned back and knocked it onto the floor. And it landed nib first and the nib tines went whoop and you know i tried to fix it but it wasn't working and then uh i somebody sourced me a new nib and since then it's been easier to find Kaveco or uh, lamy nibs but what i found with this new nib is that sure that was working but i was getting all kinds of ink right around here 
And I tried silicon grease. I tried everything I could think of. Um, what I finally concluded, there's a little part in here that screws into this outer bit. And what I finally decided is there must be micro cracks in it. So I finally broke down and bought a new pen body. Uh, I will say that this nib seems wetter than what I had in it before. From what I remember of the Lamy 2000, but again, it could all be in my head and you know, I can't make a straight comparison. It's certainly wider than this Caveco. So this is a Lamy 2000. Fine nib. And again, Pelican. 4001 black. I guess it's brilliant black, but whatever. Uh, if you've seen their broad, that's a monster. It's almost like a marker. And then I saw when I was doing the nib shopping, that there's also a double broad, which uh, I would like to try, but I'm not sure if I want to buy. <laughs> if that makes any sense. But yeah, obviously much wider and broader. So those are the pens and inks that I've been using this week. I uh, uh, School is starting. This is I'm going to have to shave this off. I'm going to not be able to wear this shirt to school. Um, Got to get all serious and business-like again. I'll start looking all professional, uh, but it'll be exciting. I've got a much bigger course load than I have in years, in many years. Uh, I almost feel like I'm back in a small school again because I've got five different courses I'm teaching this year. So uh, that ought to keep me busy. <laughs> so if I ever miss a video, you'll know why because I'm a little overwhelmed. Uh, so I'll be teaching a junior high STEM, a high school STEM, chemistry, Two sections of freshman physical science, um, computer science. I'm trying to see, is that the right number? Yes. So uh, yeah, a busier year than I've had in the past. Now I remember when I started teaching, I was teaching in a small school of about 160 kids, K through 12. I was the only science teacher, grades seven through 12. Plus I taught a math class, so I had six different courses to teach at that time. So not quite to that level and at least I've got experience and materials made and things. Uh, so I'm better prepared for this than I was fresh out of college and what? New teacher trying to figure out all those new teacher things plus this incredible workload. So this is going to be a lot better. But it will be quite a busy year. So uh, looking forward to the challenge I guess. And uh, didn't film, didn't wait to film this because I wanted to make sure I had a voice. I just, uh, I talk in the summer, but just not that much. In other exciting news, uh, my I was talking to my neighbor yesterday. I, I would swear I've been out front recently. I mean, I live here and it's, I'm outside. I've got a garden. Um, but I've got sunflowers. I don't... No, you can't see them in the preview, in the behind me in this window. But I have sunflowers growing out front. Uh, they're not as far along as I'd like, but one is starting to flower. One over there, and I'd been outside to sit, to check on it because I could see it through the window. I was like, "Oh boy," and nothing, other than the flower. But uh, my neighbor was talking to me yesterday morning about all these caterpillars, and they're just they've shredded your plants completely. What? How did I not notice this? Um, they did a lot of damage, but shredded the plants completely was quite an exaggeration. So uh, what I'm doing the next couple of days is going out there with a plastic container and uh, a stick and knocking the caterpillars into the plastic container. And then I'm giving the caterpillars a nice bath with warm soapy water. And uh, hopefully that will forestall further damage and keep my organic cred. Uh, I'm fortunately with like my cruciferous crops like uh, kohlrabi, broccoli, kale, and Brussels sprouts. Uh, I had to go the non-organic route and I have to just about every year and that's depressing. Uh, I'm not getting cabbage worms. I haven't had them in a few years. I'm getting these super tiny black bugs. Uh, when you walk out amongst them, it just sounds like almost like Rice Krispies that just snapping and crackling just from the bugs kind of... 
I don't know, jumping around or whatever it is, or it's just so many of them and pooping or well, whatever's making the noise. It's all these stupid bugs. But they just nibble away at the soft parts of the plants and uh, leave big holes in the leaves and end up, you know, killing leaves and so on, which is just Jim Dandy for the kale. But, uh, so I'm kind of writing the kale off as a lost cause this year. But anyway, what they're doing, or what I had to do is dust them. And then the, the bugs kind of end up disappearing. And I don't know if the dust kills them or if it makes it hard for them to breathe, which I suppose would kill them, or if it's a poison or how exactly it works. It's not diatomaceous earth. Um, and it's not, it, you know, these bugs aren't what's written on the packaging for it, but it works. So, yeah. But, uh, yeah, that's just depressing. Let's see what damage insects can do. And when you think about it, uh, we get grasshoppers here in the United States, you know, it's happened around here. They'll just come into an area and strip it bare. So far, I've been lucky with that with my garden, but, you know, I know people who have not been so lucky. Uh, they talk about a plague of locusts. Actually, what was it, 1870, there was a massive wave of locusts swept across the Great Plains and stripped everything bare uh, in a, do you call them a flock? A flock the size of California from this article I was reading. And uh, since then, though, that species of locust has gone extinct, which, oh darn. But, uh, you know, they're wondering if the change in agriculture here is part of why they went extinct. You know, they started tilling the soil more and they brought in animals and, you know, I don't know. Um, it's still a mystery. And, you know, 1870, that's how many years ago? <laughs> So, uh, but I, I just found that interesting because you always think of locusts in other countries, not the United States, but apparently we had them. But don't worry, we've still got grasshoppers. So if you like invading plagues of insects, there you go. Let the grasshoppers come in. Or this stupid fly that keeps landing on my light. Uh, but anyway, that's my exciting news. So uh, I guess I'm curious, is school starting in your area? Are you an area where you start after Labor Day? Or perhaps you're an area where you do year-round school, or you follow a totally different calendar idea entirely. Uh, let us know down in the comments. So I want to thank you for watching. And if videos like this interest you where I talk about fountain pens both new and old and at all price points, I would invite you to subscribe. And again, comment on your school year. When does it start? Uh, are you all year? Or do you do the summer break like here? Do you start after Labor Day? Uh, do you do long breaks sprinkled throughout the year? Uh, I, I got some opinions on how it should be done here, but we won't go there right now. So let us know down in the comments, or maybe you're having insect woes in your own garden. So feel free to commiserate. So I want to thank you for watching. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.